Hi everybody, it's Tony from COPO, and it's been a while since I've had a chance to post anything to the channel, so I really appreciate you guys keeping the ball rolling in my absence. It's been a very exciting year. I've been working on a feature film as editor and visual effects supervisor, and that should be done shortly here, as well as the amazing opportunity to be an online instructor at effectsphd.com alongside with Tim Clapham from Hello Lux. We've got some pretty intense classes happening over there this semester, so if you're interested in some advanced, in-depth training in Cinema 4D from either Tim or myself, head on over to effectsphd.com and check it out. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. And over on the forum today, I had a student asking me a question about a lampshade and how I'd go about recreating something like this, whether I'd try and cheat this or if I could do this as a practical move with a, a light source and an object. And it's kind of a combination, so I figured it'd be best to explain it in a quick tutorial. I'm not going to make it super realistic. I just want to show the quick way to do this in cinema. So it's kind of a combo. It's sort of cheating and it's sort of building it practically. So in cinema, in the material editor, we'll do this in the luminance channel. We have a shader under effects called backlight. And this allows us to apply this texture onto a flat object like a plane or a blade of grass or a leaf on a tree and in our case, a lampshade. This only works on a flat plane, so you can't apply this to an object. So we're going to have to do a little bit of trickery here to build our lampshade. And I'm going to do that by creating a plane. I'm going to scale this 100 centimeters wide, 20 tall. We'll give it 36 segments around and only one high. And I'm going to change the orientation to plus X, so it's standing tall here. Then I'm going to hold shift and add a bend deformer. And I'm going to swing that all the way around to 360 degrees. And by holding shift, that scaled the bend deformer to the size of my plane in here. Otherwise, I'd have to do this manually or hit fit to parent. Now you'll notice that the bend deformer started from the bottom of the shape and not the center. So what I want to do is move my plane back up half its distance, so it's 100 high. I'm going to move that up 50 centimeters tall. And now I want to rotate this around, but my axis point is up here. So just to make things quick, I'm going to create a null in the center of my world here, drop the plane into that null, and now I can spin the null around. So we'll make that 90, and we'll go minus 90 here. And if I look at my top viewport, you can see Again, it's doing it from this center point here. I want everything new that I create to show up in the center, so I'm just going to move that null back so the circle lines up in the center here. And I happen to know I could put that at 16 centimeters. And now if I create a new object like a light, it'll come into the center of that. Come back to perspective mode. Zoom in here. Now I want to taper my lampshade, so I'm going to create taper object and drop that into the null above the plane here. Now I can't hit fit to parent because it's not a child of any object here. It's just floating out in the open. So knowing 16 got us to the center, let's double that. Let's go 32 by 32. And we know our plane was 20 tall, so we'll make it 20 tall. And then we'll move that 16. So that's in the center there. Now I don't want any curvature in here and plus I only have one segment happening so there's nothing to curve anyway. So I'm just going to make that zero and I want to go 50% taper. And there's our lampshade. Didn't take much longer than creating a cone and pulling the caps off of it. However, if I would have done that, this backlight shader wouldn't work on that. So let's just create a cylinder for our light fixture here. Make it two and a half radius, far too many segments. So we'll just take that down to 18 and we'll make that 20 high. And then we'll just drop this 15. And then I'll just copy, paste that cylinder, put it on the Z axis, drop it down a little bit more here and we'll just slide it back in space here. 
So we need a wall. I'm just going to create a floor. I'm going to put that floor on its side here, rotate that 90 degrees, and then we'll just push that floor back in space. Like 20. That looks pretty good here. Now if I render, we have a little light fixture sitting on the wall, but our light is inside and it's not casting any shadows, so the light's coming right through the lampshade here. So let's grab our light, come to the general tab here and turn on soft shadows. And I want the light to be a little warm, so I'm going to turn on use temperature and I'm going to tell it to be 5600 Kelvin. Now when I render, you can see it's back out here. Now we've got the light casting the shadows up on the walls in here and it's lighting the inside of our lampshade. Let's go under the details of our light here and add an inverse square fall off. And at the scale, this 500 is far too much. So I'm gonna just break that down to about 40 centimeters here. And when I render, you'll see now the light is much more intense, like the concentration of light on that bulb. And then it falls off as it's coming out of there. Now this is where that backlight material in the luminous channel comes in handy. Because we're applying it to a flat plane and not a dimensional object, we're going to have the ability to backlight it as though it were a flat leaf or a blade of grass in here. And right now, because our intensity of our light is so strong, this default intensity of 80 is going to be too strong. So I'm going to knock that back to 20. And I also want to tint our light coming through our lampshade to be a little bit warm in here. And now when I apply that material onto our lampshade, the light inside should illuminate it from within. And there you go. So I can take that light and I can move it. Here, let's turn on the interactive render region here. And you can see as I move that light up and down, it's having an effect on that lampshade inside there. Okay, one more quick render. And then if we wanted to, we can add sky object, come into here, turn on the physical renderer, global illumination, ambient occlusion, and we can change this to quick render. Let's move this up to medium just to look pretty. And we'll give it one final render in here. So there you have it, a quick tutorial on how to use the backlight shader in the Luminous channel to affect a flat plane object to illuminate it from the backside with interactive light. So as you move that light around, it's also going to interact with that object as well. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. I apologize for my absence. I promise I'll be back soon when I wrap up all these fun projects I've been working on. But in the meantime, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all of the positive feedback and support on the channel. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Until then, have a great time.